Um, although RV did say that they might, they might ask to put a couple of things on the agenda. So it may have been they may have removed it and they may both need to put it back on. We'll have to see if that happens. Call the <clears throat> regular uh, East Point City Council meeting to order. It's Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024, 7 p.m. If everyone would ri rise for the invocation given by Councilman Curley, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Most Holy One, we rise to honor you tonight. We give you thanks that uh, we're here together 
as a community to solve our problems and to reach out with new ideas. We ask that you would be with those who are not feeling well tonight and uh, ask that you would be with the council that we may make a decision based upon what our community wants and not what we want. We ask all these things in your holy name, Jesus the living Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, please call the roll. Councilmember Baker. Is this on? There it is. Councilmember Baker. Am I here? Can you hear me or no? It's not like it's not here. Well, we can go forward in that. Um, Council Member Baker is not here tonight. Council Member Curley? Here. Council Member DeMonico? Here. Mayor Kleinfeld? Here. Council Member Shadlick? Here. All right, moving on to approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion? Mr. Mayor, I believe we need um, a motion to amend, if we could, to add the uh, CDBG information. Um, to um, recognize the, the priority of the CB pro CDBG projects. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'll motion to approve the agenda with one addition, the scheduled uh, public, or well, the uh, CDBG program uh, issue we got emailed us to us today. Okay. Um, item uh, D under new business? Uh, yes, sir. All right, is there a second? The floor. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Moving on to the first hearing of the public. The first hearing of the public is open. Would anyone wish to be heard? <coughs> and uh, there's a lot of people in the audience tonight, so if you step up to the podium, you could just state your name and then you have three minutes. Okay. Lynn Tobin, and I am a 54, over 54 year resident. The research is clear that whether frequent or daily use of cannabis. Oh, it's not on? Yeah. Yeah. She's on. Sorry, I have to read so I can remember. Okay. Good, because I want to read fast to make sure I get everything in. I have a soft oh. voice. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Speak as close as you can. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, again, and I am Lynn Tublin, a resident of over 54 years. The research is clear that whether frequent or daily this is associated with the probability on drug abuse is a public health concern. A substance that has resulted in memory loss, difficulty in learning, lower math and reading scores, decreased concentration with the likelihood of developing disorders such as depression, suicide, paranoia, disorientation, to name a few, caused by effects on the nerves to the brain. Participant studies of youth and adults alike who use this substance for coping and or enjoyment over time report experiencing all that I've previously mentioned, along with increased anxiety, many regretful decisions, and that getting in trouble with school or an employer or the courts was an unavoidable outcome. Our youth and young adults are our future leaders. Your decisions can and would greatly inflict upon them all that I've mentioned into having lives of lower income capabilities, 
greater welfare dependence, unemployment, criminal behavior, and lower life satisfaction. Or instead, embolden them instead to be productive, self-reliant, respectful, compassionate, justice-oriented citizens. Because of your desire for additional tax revenue, you would be advocating your responsibility to our citizens just for mere profit. Yes, and in doing so, jeopardizing the character and stability of our city, resulting in an uptick in crime, lower property values, and increased home insurance rates. Our now, our now called family town would soon become a place where viable families and businesses no longer exist. <clears throat> we will instead be known as East Point, Ghost Town, USA, a place where even Casper wouldn't want to live. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Carol Morrington, East Point resident. Um, no, absolutely not. No licenses for recreational use. There's nothing responsible about smoking pot when you have kids and animals in the house. They're both put in harm's way in developing asthma, lung cancer, and trips to the emergency room when kids or animals eat pot or edibles that aren't kept under lock and key. And if you fail to take your animals to the vet due to pot poisoning or edible poisoning, now you're looking at being charged with neglect under the anti-cruelty statute. And you better not lie to the vet if you do take your animals because of the toxicity due to the pot or the edibles they ate. Because if you lie, the vets can't properly treat them. There's also nothing responsible about creating and maintaining a nuisance with the disgusting stench of the smokeweed that interferes, the skunkweed that interferes with neighboring properties, and it's also prohibited under the anti-smoke ordinance. Um, there's nothing responsible when you have residents or their guests sitting in the cars smoking pot. You can smell it several houses away. Or you go to the stores, you're in the parking lot, you get out of your car, there's that disgusting stench. People aren't being responsible. They're not waiting to just do it at home. They do it in the cars, in the parking lot, in front of the house, then they're getting in the damn cars and driving under the influence. Now, for those of you who walk, you know what it's like when people, you know, constantly blow off the stop signs. It's reckless driving. This is only going to make it worse. And have any of you consulted with Chief Haynes, with Mr. Albright, with Judge Galen about the crime stats since 2018-2019? Because it is happening all over. Some areas aren't hit as bad with the crime, but Hazel Park, remember Hazel Park that, you know, we're paying for them in regards to the fire department? Yeah, they've noticed a huge increase in crime since, you know, this this was passed back in 2018, 2019. And by the seconds. way, Visa, MasterCard, checks, no, nope, you can't write them at these pot dispensaries. And also the safer acts, that hasn't cleared the Senate yet. So just because that hasn't been enforced yet doesn't mean that it won't be. And also I want to leave you with this. Um, WebMD said one thing pot and schizophrenia have in common is psychosis. And psychosis is a symptom from smoking pot. This is just ridiculous. Don't do it. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be here? Okay, what the one thing what this is about is that my model and Kelly fiasco up there. More, I, I, uh, I, I went after uh, 100% to get you in. You're the sharpest guy we've had in a decade in this uh, cons kind of a city here and everything like that. But after you condone that thing on my road, you didn't learn anything from my and Gresham. It wiped out a half a dozen cars. 
and then I told the chief of police when they put that in, I said, that's not going to last six months. You know how long it lasted? Three. They wiped out the whole schmear, and it's so bad, you know. But after, I can't believe that you went along with that thing. Instead of improving 9 and 10 mile road and resurfacing it, which it needs, it's like a gravel road, for Christ's sakes, you know. It's just unbelievable. Spend that money and, and resurface the street instead of putting that goofy setup there by the Roney Highway, which you want to put in. So anyway, but... The other thing is about the uh, marijuana permits and everything like that, which I cannot understand that you would even consider anything like that. You know, if that flies through to the council and the mayors on the take, that's the only thing I can figure. So anyway, that's, that's my spear for the day. So anyway, that's it. You know, the city already is known for the cheapest hard drugs to get cheap hard drugs here. The city of East Point is known for that. If you want cheap hard drugs, go to East Point. Thank you. Uh, could you say your name? Sorry, Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Okay. My name is Miss Billy Twine, and I'm an East Point resident, and I'm not for medical marijuana or recreational marijuana, either way it goes, it's not going to benefit our community. It's a sh short fix for a long-term problem with people with addictions, and like she said, drinking and driving and add marijuana to it. We just had a drug bust of an owner. He owned a gas station attached to a washing compartment where they wash cars. They just bust him for having heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl. And they had them in capsules that they make for prescription drugs. And they were selling it and breaking it down for the community in Livonia. But eventually they was going to get it over here to East Point. It's a bad issue to try to do this just for the benefit of money. We was going to damage our community more so than help our community. The other issue is what are we saying to our children? How are we going to rule this and keep them from being exposed to this illegal drugs or this marijuana? How are we going to be able to discipline them? How are we going to be able to tell them right from wrong? And then on top of all of that, I came here uh, on March the 11th, and all I was asking for was some resources to get prayer back into the school. We took prayer out of school, and the whole foundation just fell apart. The devil came in. It's not a safe environment for our children to learn in. Not only that, for them to even be safe or feel as though they're going to be comforted or not having to feel or having some kind of safety where they have to find somewhere for security because somebody is threatening to hurt them with a gun. It's like our, our whole foundation fell apart. If we don't teach them, the other thing was the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If we don't tell them about our rights as American citizens, the Pledge of Allegiance give us something to stand on, one nation under God. If they don't have God in their life, where is their future going to be? Where is our future going to be? Because they are our future. We have to give them a foundation to stand on. And if we don't do it now, what is going to happen in the meantime? We're going to fall as a nation because we're so separated from God that our children don't even know. They celebrate at Easter, but they don't know the, what the meaning of it. 30 seconds. Okay, another thing. I reached out to uh, John, the uh, uh, school intended, to find out more resources. on If we could just get it, if not in the school, on the foundation before they go to school. Prayer, learning about the Pledge of Allegiance, and even the Ten Commandments. That teach you right and wrong how to respect each other as children to be safe in a learning environment and respect with each other. That's all I have to say. Hello, my name is Bill Manuel, <clears throat> East Point resident for over 20 years. I'm a veteran, a Desert Storm veteran. And uh, I got this in the mail. Maybe some of you got this as well. And uh, I'm actually troubled by this. I'm seeing a lot of allegations and not support. 
with the support, saying property values are going to go down. Mm -hmm. I go online and find out. Sometimes property values go up, sometimes they go down. Mm -hmm. Some real estate uh, firm out in Colorado found that they went up. Now, that's not a, a, an only reason why to uh, allow it or not. But the point is, is I'd like to see some data. I'm going to know who's doing this. Because you know what? It's all the complaints I hear about the threat for the children. You know what children are dying from these days? It's not cannabis. It's not car crashes. It's bullets. They're dying from bullets. And nothing's being done about that, and nothing will be done. You know, we have a country where we're not doing anything about climate change. We've been warned about this for decades. Talk about, you know, not able to have a wonderful future for our children. Well, there you go. It's been, it's been scuttled so fossil fuel execs can make money. Our leaders at the highest levels have dropped the ball in every way, shape, or form. Lobbyists write most of our laws. Okay, and our politicians are nothing more than trained pigeons. Uh, not you, because you don't have that juice, thank God. They're trained pigeons. Yay or nay, whatever they're paid to say. And that's why we can't get anything done in this country. It's pay to play. And I want you to look at something here. Okay, a few years ago, two years ago, I was uh, 215 pounds. Had a 190 over 200 um, blood pressure. Was pre-diabetic. Had angina attacks seven, eight, nine times a day. So bad I had to lay down in Kroger's. Well, my kids kept on hassling me. Try edibles, Dad. Try edibles. Okay, I tried it. And then after a while of using edibles, the weight fell off. My uh, diabetes, my blood sugar numbers are picture perfect. Blood pressure, picture perfect. My doctor was first like, well, I'll let you go and see how this goes. And then, he's, and then I saw him again, and he was on a diet. He started gaining weight. I'm still losing weight. He's like, don't you change a thing. Okay, thank you, doctor. I will not change a thing. Some other things, too. I became very interested in science and eating edibles, and maybe, you know, that's just a stone thing or whatever, but I started reading about and uh, understanding special relativity. I can write, science. I can write the gamma uh, function up and explain how special relativity works. I can explain how quantum mechanics works in the double slit experiment. And there's not a lot of people that can, and I learned this under the influence of edibles. And I think it's just a lot of almost bigotry, borderline bigotry, about how mean people are going after cannabis when cannabis is not even close to the biggest problem in this country. That's all I have. Thank you, Dave. My name is Tanya Han. I'm a resident of East Point. And whereas an on the card that was sent to us said that you are already made a decision about the medical marijuana facilities, which isn't really needing to be discussed since that decision has been made. And I don't disagree that there are medicinal purposes for marijuana, but what reason is there for recreational marijuana dispensaries? See, if you are just doing it for recreation, there are a number of places they can already get that. East Point is a five-mile wide city, so you want a dispensary for every mile that exists? And as far as I see, I don't care if it's local, state, or federal. Politicians have decided that you're not listening to your constituency. You have these meetings and then you do what you want. But again, I don't blame just the politicians because it's our fault. We vote on name recognition. We vote because we like you. We vote because we've heard you or sir, saw you. What we need to start doing is listening and paying attention to what you're voting on. And when you don't vote for what we ask for, get rid of you. Because this doesn't make sense. We shouldn't even be having a meeting about recreational marijuana. This is what they call the bedroom community. There's no city in this particular area of Michigan where you can't ride down the street, smell marijuana while you're riding. Go to the store, it's there. In the gas station, it's there. Go to the doctor's office, it's outside of there. Everywhere you go, you smell marijuana. I like walking in the East Point because I don't smell it everywhere. I like it because I can walk down the street. Yeah, children, they know about marijuana. They know more about things going on out here than we do. But the difference is, is that we have a space where we don't have to deal with that. If people are using marijuana for medicinal purposes, you've already said you've got three of them. Let those three be it. And if you just decide, oh, well, we need recreational, why would you add two more? Why wouldn't you just say to those, two, those three that exist, that's what they could do? It shouldn't be necessary. 
but I know since Colorado made so much money, everybody else is in on it. I want the money. But as a black woman, I watched many black people go to jail for nothing but a joint. And now we have politicians saying, oh, we're going to make this work. No, it's just greed. It's greed. And what we as people need to do is get rid of everybody that does not listen to what it is we say we want. Yes. yes, my name is Anthony Fuller, my residence of East Point. Um, some of the questions or the comments have already been made that I was thinking about saying, what is the beneficial, what is the benefit, how is going to benefit our community beyond just tax dollars? I don't know if we can get some feedback on some of the questions. Some of these was proposed as questions uh, filtered with comments. So we need some feedback from you guys. And actually, I didn't know we had two dispensaries in there already uh, with inside the city limits. And another thing, because I guess y'all not answering any questions now. I don't know if you can have something later to uh, uh, address some of the comments that was made that would be really helpful instead of just being a blank comment. It's not worth anything if you don't uh, comment back on it and answer some of those questions. And Russ, can we get an update? Maybe it was in the newsletter or something on the pro uh, on that um, big boys' properties. What's what's going on with that? <clears throat> no answer, right? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Okay, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Craig Wodecki, East Point resident. On a much lighter note, um, a couple of the city commissions are sponsoring a few events this April, and we'd like to invite the public to join us. First of all, on April 20th, I really don't want to say 420 today, um, <laughs> we are having a citywide cleanup. We're going to meet at Kelly and 8 Mile, and we're going to clean up the berm and perhaps some of the sidewalks on Kelly Road. We do this every year to a different part of every city, and this, this year we've chosen Kelly Road. So at 10 in the morning on April 20th, we're going to meet at Kelly at 8 Mile. You'll see us all in our nice yellow vests and rakes and shovels and uh, bags and whatever we need to clean up, and we'll work to a room and make uh, Kelly a little bit cleaner for maybe one day at least. And then on the 27th, and I'm just walking into another one, uh, the friends of the East Point Library are having a bunco night. I just want to make sure the chief of police is aware that this is a social dice game, not, not anything you refer to bunco, but it's a fundraiser for the friends of the East Point Library. It's $10 a person, and we're going to run from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, doors will be open at 4.30. We'll have food and refreshments and some prizes. And I know that the friends sent out some solicitation letters to some of the uh, elected officials. And we hope that uh, you're generous not only with your gifts, but with your appearance and with your time. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Kathy Schloss, East Point resident. Um, I wasn't planning on speaking tonight. I was just going to see what people had to say, but apparently my voice needs to be heard too. Um, I, I don't see what the problem is. I understand everybody's concerned, but again, like what he said, I want to see facts. I mean, crime rates go up and this and this. You guys don't understand that kids can get it anywhere. If you're worried about kids, then you have to do a better job parenting. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I've raised four kids by myself. I'm a single mother. I'm a daily cannabis user. And I've held down a job and raised my kids all by myself with no help. I'm not a loser. I'm not. A, I'm a responsible, independent, tax-paying citizen, just like everybody else. I don't understand why the hullabaloo. If the city needs, the city needs revenue, is the bottom line. If this is going to bring in residue, rev revenue, then why not let it happen? It, everything is going to continue to go on the same way. The only thing I will say that I do agree with, with some of those said, is um, smoking. If there can be some kind of regulations made that like there should be, there's no use allowed in the parking lots, because I don't think that anybody should be subjected to that either. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. My name is Maria Melli, and uh, it's the beginning of the year in January. 
my brother Andrew Milley had died and when he was in the hospital at one o'clock in the morning the doctor confronted me and he says I can't get over why does he have such a high concentration of carbon monoxide in his blood and this is one o'clock in the morning we just happened to come up to the doctor because we were leaving and the doctor he, he says I'm just baffled I can't figure it out well I commented to him that my brother was taking marijuana on a medical basis in an enclosed bedroom with the door closed and he would take his marijuana the doctor rolled his eyes and he said the marijuana would cause him to have a heart attack. My brother had a heart attack and fell down a flight of steps. When he fell, he damaged, he had permanent brain damage. But that's what really was, it wasn't the, the marijuana that killed him, but he had a heart attack. He fell down the steps, he had brain damage, they resuscitated him when he was in the ambulance, came back into the hospital, had another heart attack. The doctor was just so baffled, but I can tell you that my brother had voted in for the medical marijuana and was so excited about having marijuana. And his comment was, boy, I can tell the police officers that I have legal marijuana. And the thought behind that is, how many other people might have the same attitude about taking it? Not because of the medical purposes, but the, the thought of, oh boy, I can do this now and get away with it. And I'm just feeling from my heart, my brother did die, and uh, the doctor said that the... Oxi the, 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 the gas in his blood with the carbon monoxide was enough to give him a heart attack. So whether or not that caused the heart attack, he had two of them in that same night, but he did roll his eyes and he just said that was enough to cause a heart attack. And if people don't realize, you've got to, you can't inhale it in an enclosed area. It can cause the breathing in carbon monoxide, and it killed my well. Something happened to my brother. I don't have him anymore. Okay. Thank you. My name is Mark Lux. I've been in the city for 15 years. I'm going to bring attention to the marijuana thing. There is no more medical marijuana at all in any state. What it is, everything is recreational. If you got a medical marijuana card, you only save three dollars, and it's the same marijuana you're buying as recreational. I got two friends that own dispose, and they make over two hundred thousand dollars bring in a week. Now I think this city should allow dispensaries come in here. It's good tax money for the city, and it's going to lower our taxes. Because every time there's a millage, people vote that millage in, our taxes go up. Every time. So I think we let these dispos come in here. Everybody's got the wrong idea, like it's going to be violent or all that. It ain't violent at all. They got their own security. You're in, you're out, and you're gone. So if we allow these to come in here, the tax that the city can make is phenomenal. And I really think you should take a good look at it. Because if you go to dispensary now with a medical car, which I have, they don't have medical marijuana. It's all the same marijuana. It just costs me three dollars cheaper. Thank you very much. Glad you could hear me. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Robert Huth. Uh, my address is one nine five hundred Hall Road in Clinton Township. Uh, I'm a municipal attorney, and I'm, I want to tell you a little bit about my experience, uh, not to pat myself on the back, but just to tell you how much time I've spent on that side of the table looking at cannabis issues here in Michigan. Uh, I've been the city attorney in Harrison Township that came up with one of the first uh, men, uh, marijuana ordinances in the state. I was hired by the city of Pontiac to referee its cannabis process. 
I interviewed with the mayor of Detroit and the city council of Detroit. It was the only attorney hired to review all 300 applications there to choose who should be uh, granted a license in the city of Detroit. Uh, most recently, I was uh, hired by as a full-time city attorney in Mount Clemens, as it is now has uh, recreational and medical marijuana. So uh, I have had some experience. I like sitting up there a lot more than here because uh, uh, it's uh, not as comfortable at the podium as it is up there. Your counsel is talented. And when you get a chance to talk to him later, he's going to tell you something that's very important. When you did your first ordinance here in East Point, the law was unclear as to what types of things you can ask for. So you did an ordinance that permitted medical marijuana. What happened then, two years later, the voters in Michigan said, uh, you should permit recreational use marijuana. In that statute, they said something else. You can ask for some different things from your local community that help your local community and charge these folks that are, are selling cannabis in your community. In the beginning, the courts didn't know whether or not they should uphold that. So for example, somebody may have put in the ordinance in Royal Oak uh, Township that tell us what you're going to do to get rid of a blighted building. Initially, the court said, that has nothing to do with cannabis. Strike that. But what's happened, thankfully, here in the state of Michigan is the courts have empowered you folks sitting up there to decide if you want to have retail cannabis in your community to start putting some requirements on there to help everybody in your community. You can require that they clean up their uh, business, environmentally be uh, friendly, they can um, and yep. take, care, take care of blight. So what I'm saying to, in conclusion is, I don't have a position as to whether or not you should go forward with recreational cannabis. But if you do go forward, don't make the worst choice possible. And the worst choice possible is to award cannabis licenses to three people that have had licenses here, have done nothing for your community, and are not required to do anything for your community. Open it up if you're going to do it. Let everybody come in here and show what they can do for your community. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Of course, I'm going to talk about cannabis. <laughs> now, I, I, I'm not going to give a bunch of numbers and statistics. I'm going to simply say I've been in East Point 20 years. And we moved here because it was supposed to be a nice, safe, quiet place to live. Okay. We don't even have a dispensary here in East Point, And I still have to deal with smelling that crap. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to deal with it. If you, if, if you, if you want to smoke it, I don't care. Smoke it in your basement. Smoke it in your house. I don't care. I don't want to smell it. And if we get in the business of selling it, okay, fully on us, wrong on us, okay. I don't care how much tax. I'd rather pay more in taxes. Yeah. Okay? I don't have any problem paying more in taxes, but that means I can live in a safe, quiet, yeah. comfortable city. Yeah. 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 Crash it. Heavy traffic. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen to the traffic if you open up three dispensaries in the city of Beast Point? Yeah. There goes my quiet. There goes my safe. There goes my comfort. Because graduate becomes an additional highway. I don't, it this doesn't need to be any busier. You know, uh, it doesn't mean, it, it's, it's not like you open three dispensaries and the only people who come in here are going to be East Plain residents. All the traffic you're going to get coming across eight mile, nine mile, ten mile, well, you know, I, I, I don't need it. I don't want it. Twenty years. Why do you think I stay? I'm in my third, second house in East Point. Why? Because it's nice and it's quiet. Okay. And until they passed this stupid law, I didn't have to smell this crap. Now I got to smell it, and you want to sell it? You know what? Raise my taxes. I don't.
care. I'd rather that than a dispensary. Thank you. Uh, could you say your name for the record before you sit down? Arthur McKinney. Thank you very much. Anyone else this year? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Michael Roth, 62-year resident of East Point, proud graduate of East Trade High School. I don't have a problem with giving out free licenses for marijuana. Whether it's legal or illegal, you're still going to smell it. People are going to have, you know, use it, abuse it. At least this way, we're going to have nice, clean buildings that are going to be taken care of. You're going to get a tax base. They're also going to give back to the community. I'm a prime example of my East Detroit Tiger Cats. They've given to us. And that's helped me buy equipment, helmets. It's helped me pay for kids who, who can't pay to play. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do it. You know, I used to work for the police department here in East Point, East Detroit. I taught there. I worked in the courts as a bailiff. The city attorney knows me from that. I've seen all this marijuana. It, there's no fact to it. Just like it was looked up, 68% of the residents of East Point voted to legalize it years ago. 68%. So the people that are here are the minority, and, and I support them. They, that's their choice. But I said overall, this would be good for the city. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nicole D'Angelo. I'm a relatively new member um, of East Point, about five years. Um, but I'm all for the marijuana dispensaries as well. Um, Roseville's doing it. Everybody's doing, you know, everybody has it everywhere. There are dispensaries everywhere. People are driving in and out of East Point to get it and driving back in to East Point. It's not legal to do it in a car anyway. Nobody's sitting in the car doing it. They're going to buy it. They're taking it to wherever they're going to do it, be it a bar, be it their house. So, if, if everyone can keep in mind, I think we'll give us an opportunity to speak. Um, if you miss each other, that's fine, but try not to interrupt. Thank you. Um, but I think that it is similar to alcohol. Um, alcohol, there's a lot of alcohol. You can get all up and down Gratiot, all up and down Nine Mile. Um, people driving around doing that. Um, you know, I've been to the store at the corner of my street at 7 a.m. and, you know, seeing people sitting in the parking lot on their way to work or doing whatever. People are going to do what they're going to do. Um, and we may as well uh, benefit from it. Um, I also agree with, you know, everything the other gentleman that was just up here before me said. Um, and as far as the other cities, I've spent some time in Hazel Park, and it's beautiful there since the dispensaries are there. There's traffic, everything is bright, every, I mean, it's nice. The, there's nice restaurants, they're really coming up. The dispensaries take care of all of their properties, even the ones that I've been to in Madison Heights. Um, you know, it, it, I think it's going to be a good thing. Um, I think the worries are worries that are, you know, everybody worries about the children and wants everybody to be good and responsible people, and I do too. So, that's it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Caitlin Donnelly, and I'm a four-year resident of East Point. I'm also going to talk about the cannabis thing. I'm not a smoker. In fact, I do not like the smell of it, but I think it's a positive thing for many people. Statistically, it is far less dangerous than alcohol use and abuse. So I think it's a titch silly to get up here and talk about public safety when we have so many liquor stores here in East Point and no one seems to be complaining about them. Um, and as for the ordinances, um, deciding between a recreational and a medical, I think it would also be a little silly and possibly confusing to have different ordinances for both medical and recreational marijuana. Um, I think that if we do have licenses for dispensaries in the city, um, it should be both medical and recreational. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Stavros Toma, 3600 Van Dyke. 
Western Lance, Michigan. Um, I'm a developer for Jars Cannabis, and I um, I read in the paper the other day that East Point was considering and giving recreational licenses to the three medical licenses they already awarded back in 2022. Um, the one thing I'll point out is the three licenses you gave up, they've done nothing. They haven't built anything. They haven't given. Any, they haven't. Uh, you know, created jobs. They haven't you know, cleaned up their buildings. And they've done nothing. Um, to, to a good example of a good example of what we've done for medical. We originally had a medical license in Mount Clemens. In Mount Clemens, we built a brand new building ground up. We also bought the bladed building that was next door, the big boy, and tore it down for parking. Um, that was all before there was recreational was even considered in Mount Clemens. Um, so, you know, what, what I would suggest is don't rush into this. Take your time. Let's have some work sessions. I'll gladly be involved in these work sessions and bring, you know, my attorneys and some of our, you know, some, some people from my group with me, and you know, let's work together to put together a, a, a great ordinance. Um, the XXX is not always going to be there. Um, it, it'll be there, but it won't be what it is today. Um, last year, municipalities got paid about fifty-nine thousand for each dispensary they had in their municipality. Um, a lot more dispensaries are opening this year. For example, in New Buffalo, Michigan, they're opening 35 dispensaries. That's all go That's all going to eat away at the excise tax. So the excise tax is not always going to be 60000 We require, require these recreational applicants to give back to, to East Point, to clean up blighted properties, um, to get involved in the community. And, you know, the cannabis industry is pretty generous, but this it has to be done right. Giving it to these three um, that, that you currently award licenses to, they're not obligated to do anything. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Um, my name is Cynthia Davis. I'm a resident of, I've been a resident of East Point for uh, a little over 19 years. And um, also uh, am, have been a, a, a law enforcement officer, worked for the city of Detroit for 25 years as well as I worked for East Point for a little, uh, almost nine years. And when I received the uh, flyer, I was, of course, upset by it. Um, I hear a lot of people talking and saying that, you know, uh, they're, they're talking about the sale of uh, cannabis and and how uh, and relating it to alcohol. Um, alcohol you can't smell until a person walks past, uh, walks past you. Marijuana you can smell if they're uh, if it's if the smell is you know coming from a building. I mean you'll be able to smell that. So. Um, the, the, the part that, that really bothers me is the fact that uh, the crime rate, it also heightens the crime rate. You know, um, you have more people coming in. Uh, you know, I, I mean, these places get robbed as well. So I'm looking at crime rate going up, which it will. Um, you know, and possibly shootings because people are going to try and rob these places to get whatever they can and it's just going to cause more issues. Um, I understand that the city wants to generate money and revenue but it, it just has to be another answer. I mean you got several buildings uh, along Gratiot that's vacant that can that restaurants and, and uh, other businesses can come in um, but as far as Generating, I mean, uh, the the marijuana distributions is just not the answer. Uh, my my question would be, what are the steps that the city has taken to ensure that the um to ensure the safety uh, for the children and the community um, and the crime rate that will be affected uh, by this cannabis selling. And pretty much that's all I have to say. I just wanted to express my opinion. Oh, no, sir, sir. Sorry, but everyone speak. Good evening. My name is Rochelle Riley. I've been a resident of East Point for, I believe, like 12 years. And the only thing I can correlate this to is when they open big betting games. I don't know if anybody lives 
in that vicinity, but when they opened that facility, I can't tell you the number of times I've had to call the police because of fighting, blocking my driveway, and the police like, oh, drive across your lawn to get out um, the loud noise, the service, the music, the vulgar language. Like, I literally was desperately thinking about selling my house. So to me, it did increase the crime rate. It did increase jeopardizing the police safety, my family's safety. We were scared to even come in at certain times of the night because it was so much traffic up and down the street all night long. We can't even leave our windows open to get night air because they're so loud. So to me, I say no. I've never smoked. I haven't had an alcoholic beverage in over 11 years. I'm not knocking what somebody else does or decides to do, but I don't, my son has never been exposed to it. And I don't want us when we're on our bike ride to go through the neighborhood and see a kind of a dispensary where I look at the facilities down 8 Mile and the line of traffic is just holding up traffic because they're waiting to get into these facilities. I feel like if people took the time to think about how they would feel if these things were in their neighborhood, like to me, their club or whatever you want to call it should have never been in a residential neighborhood. That just wasn't a good idea. I call so many times about the trash, whole hookah sets, if, or whatever you call them, in front of our house. They left a stolen car in front of my house, so I had to call the police. It's just, to me, there's nothing good that can come from it. So I'm asking you guys to just really think about it. I respect what everybody else said, but from my experience, just from these big daddy games, I just can't separate what type of community or crowd the dispensary should be. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hello, greetings, everybody. My name is Atali Lewis. All money is not good money. We have the safety of our children to look at. We have already seen in Detroit where they just busted where children were being sold illegal drugs. I drive, I work at night, and me too experienced the situation with Big Daddy. I'm coming down, um, I'm coming east on Cali. And they were so high, they were coming directly. They didn't even get on the other side. They were coming directly at me. And I could have been killed. I could have lost my life as well as my husband. And every night when I come home, there's nothing but with Big Daddy, a lot of just paper and trash everywhere. And far as the dispensary go, there are so many canvas. If people want marijuana in East Point, all they gotta do is go right there to eight mile. I mean, you got it what within two and three mile range, you got a canvas right there. And far as money, you know, I would rather see you raise my taxes too. I'd rather see the taxes be raised. We have an elderly we have a lot of elderly in our community. This is going to um, cause them not to feel so comfortable going in and out of the stores and going to the doctors because when you allow that to happen, rest assured, it's not going to just be East Point people. It's going to be everybody all over. And when those doctors write those um, release sli slips, they tell they they recommend them to go to certain ones. You know, like they, like my doctor, he recommend me and me to go to certain pharmacies. But I don't have to go to that pharmacist. I can choose any one that I want. To, but I go there because he recommended me, and that's the same way it's going to be, you know, with, with, with this canvas because, you know, ultimately everybody get a cut off of it. And so, what I'm saying is, think about, you know, this is a family community, this is a quiet community, this is a community where you have a lot of elderly people in this community, and like, like I said, all of money is not good money. It's not always the right way to go just, be, just because it has a big dollar bill on it. Thank you. And I'm not against anybody who smoke it. I'm just simply saying, don't bring it here. You go right there to 8 Mile, right on the corner of 8 Mile and Kelly. There's one right there. My God. Yeah, I'm going to be here. Anyone else wish to hear? No, you, sir, you already spoke. You can't. So you have a second here. The only question I had, no, sir. does anybody on the panel smoke? Sit down. Yes. Nobody wants to answer that question. <laughs> Cindy Federley, yeah, long time hold on, resident. Hold on one second. Here, one, sir. Yeah, sir, I'm going to ask that you. Uh, uh, okay, if there's one more outburst, I am going to have to ask that you be removed from the meeting. Um, sorry about that. Go ahead. Cindy Federley, long time resident. 
Um, I'm in support of the marijuana dispensaries. I think that you need to put parameters in as far as parking so we don't have backups. Um, make the rules, maybe have them fund the DARE program for the schools or some anti-drug. But I think that you're trying to put a genie back in the bottle. It's all over. I don't care where you go. Why can't we benefit from the revenue, from the sales, and maybe clean up some of our blighted buildings? I think it's a positive thing. I don't think there are the medical complications to somebody that smokes or uses edibles like there are with alcohol or cigarettes. Cigarettes smoking in a closed room probably would raise your carbon dioxide also. I think that there's a lot of myths out there as far as the impact of it. And I think it's a positive thing, especially if you're dealing with pain. I've seen it in my sister. She died of an opioid overdose. Had she not been afraid to use the edibles, she probably would still be here. So that's my opinion. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steve Fleck. Um, I've actually been using cannabis since I was 13, so 31 years now. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, it's never damaged me. It's never killed me obviously. Um, it's never made me insane. Uh, what causes insanity, since I am a scientist and I do study this, and I work in the cannabis industry as a breeder, and uh, what actually causes psychosis is bad microbes. And the things that cause that are pollution, pesticides, um, your food that you eat that's not whole foods. All this is horrible for people, but I don't see anybody trying to help all that. You know what I mean? Why don't we actually go for the causes of things you know, this guy did not die of a heart attack from cannabis. He already had a bad heart. And it maybe, like, did something to it, but it was going to happen eventually. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's actually shown that, like, in the studies that cannabis actually can help with the heart and strengthen the heart. Um, there's just so many things, like so many falsehoods and lies I'm hearing here that they're probably getting from some bad news source. You know, that none of it's actually true. And I'm just here to tell you that. And I believe that, like, the chance to, like, bring cannabis, not only cannabis, but entheogenic plants and psychedelics can actually help people with addiction. That's a huge thing. Like, we don't want to support the pill poppers. We don't want to support the heroin. We don't want to support all, like, crack or anything like that, or meth. That's bad for people, okay? That doesn't help you at all. Especially when it's, like, made in, like, some junky way, where they mix a bunch of stuff with it, you know? With anything, we want things to be good for people. We want it to be healthy. And we don't want to want like tons of sugar and stuff either. Like we should be going for healthier foods in general. We should stop the obesity things. I, I've got a bit myself. You know, I, like we all need to work on that. You know, we all need to like like put good things in our bodies that can help them. And cannabis and entheogenic plants are those things. And so are whole foods. You know, probiotics. You know, things like that. That's pretty much it. Would anyone else wish to hear? Anyone else? Oh, but there, there were, I believe, three emails um, that were requested to be read in. Mr. Mayor, just briefly, um, the first one uh, to be read in is Mary Hall Rayford would like to uh, urge everyone who has an interest in the facilities and school district to attend the meeting on April 17th, 2024, at the Middle School Cafeteria. Um, they'll be discussing options to uh, right-size the district. Um, they're talking about possibly closing the high school campus or the Early Learning Center facility. Um, also that anybody who wants to run for a school board seat for positions are up this election cycle and the deadline to get on the ballot is July 23rd. Um, we have one, um, uh, Elba and Rob Talamante, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, seriously opposed to the plan of licensing recreational cannabis sale in East Point. Many friends and neighbors feel the same way. Um, they bring up serious crime and the recent shootings on Kelly. Um, they do not want to add to crime and overburden our law enforcement. Um, and the last one, uh, reading uh, Jennifer Nicholas, read an article in Macomb Daily that the city is considering to allow recreational marijuana, marijuana facilities. Um, she's opposed to the operation of recreational marijuana facilities. <coughs> Disappointed that there are already three medical marijuana facilities in a city of five square miles. Um, again, references that weed sales do not promote a family town. She's interested in hearing from Chief Haynes and the police department um, on whether such shops have a positive or negative impact on the community from a police standpoint. Um, and was aware that East Point was working on projects to benefit children and families, including upgrading the parks, adding a basketball court, maybe a splash pad. And it seems that operating weed, so uh, weed shops would undermine the family-friendly community.
Is that it? Okay. All right, again, anyone else wish to hear? Seeing none, the first hearing of the public is closed. Moving on to approval of the minutes, item A, regular meeting minutes from Mark. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I'll move that one down. I'm sorry. Oh. Do you need us to add? Mm -hmm. Overriding something. Amen. We need just to amend for uh, um, some missing information that was added about a vote. Okay. So for the amended minutes, it's a motion you're Please. So you want a motion to approve the amended minutes? So moved. Support. All right. Motion to support. Please call roll. Councilmember Curley. Yes. Councilmember DeMonico. Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld. Yes. Councilmember Shadley. Yes. We have no scheduled hearings uh, or unfinished business, so moving on to re two reports from administration. Uh, city Manager's report, Ms. Holman. Thank you very much. Um, to let everybody know, the $10 million program, um, $10 million that we got actually um, through Senator Kleinfeld's office for the replacement of lead service lines, the work started this week. Both contractors have signed the contracts. Um, residents are going to be, have already been contacted by the Department of Public Works and Services to schedule appointments uh, for the contractors to come in and replace the lines to their homes. So please answer your phones <laughs> and uh, make that appointment uh, so the contractors can move forward. It's a lot of money to spend um, to get this all fixed. Um, the Kelly Road Complete Streets Corridor Plan, they had a community age engagement session two weeks ago. Um, it was well attended. They also received over 100 survey responses. Um, the presentation and the survey are available online on our website, so please uh, check it out. Um, the Rare, uh, Rare uh, is in the middle of redoing its joint master plan with the City of East Point and Roseville. Um, there are poster boards with each of the parks in our lobby as well as in the lobby, I believe, at the Rare Center. Um, please feel free to put your comments there, things you would like to see in each of the parks. Tree plantings, it's spring, so we planted 54 trees um, last fall, and the uh, planting program will be starting up this month. So if you are interested, please let, um, please check our website for the, the kickoff for the um, trees that will be available. Um, and the upcoming events, of course, the cruise and the Memorial Day Parade. Um, and we received the application today uh, for the special event for May 2nd for the National Day of Prayer at City Hall, which will be before council next meeting for approval. Thank you. Hey, any questions? I had a couple questions, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I guess, first of all, I'm getting a couple comments that people can't hear on the live stream. It's not, uh, audio's not good. Okay, yeah, well, they've been here monitoring it and out in the hallway, and okay. I guess we understand. We're trying to figure out what happened. It was okay. working perfectly last time. <laughs> um, and then I had two questions. Uh, one, uh, when were we planning to put the uh, social media policy uh, ad hoc committee together? I've seen, you know, we had a couple residents interested. Of course, we know the two council members and then whoever from city administration was going to take part. Yeah, we'll be get, getting that going, gearing that up as soon as possible. We had uh, more than a handful of people who have applied for the two positions. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. And then what was my other question? Oh, can we please uh, add to the next agenda the updated nine mile engineering plans? That was all. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to uh, finance, director, finance Director's Report, Mr. Bowman. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, just want to let you know that the uh, proposed budget is up on the website under the Financial Transparency section. Um, you all have your own copy, but for the public, you can go take a look at the, uh, uh, the whole package. Uh, and the other thing is the line item budget detail with all the footnotes was emailed out towards the end of the day today. Um, it's fairly extensive, but if you'd like a printed copy, we can have that. Uh, you'll have about five weeks to review stuff and uh, ask away on the questions before the meeting if you wish. But that's all I have. Any questions? All right, thank you for sending that. I'm sure we were going to ask for the, the line item if we didn't see it. So. It's a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, moving on to city attorney's report, Mr. Albright. Thank you, Mayor and Members of Council. Uh, short report section this evening in light of uh, our closed session. Uh, council is in receipt of uh, my monthly status report. I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Thank, Thank you. you. 
Um, and moving on to new business item A, presentation of the city manager's proposed fiscal year 24-25 budget um, and scheduling budget workshops. Ms. Hallman, would you like to start? I would. Um, as I explained to our, our city manager and our finance director, um, this is the city manager's budget. Um, as she is not here, I am more than happy to defer to Mr. Blum as finance director in the absence of our esteemed city manager. Okay. Um, before you tonight is the city manager's proposed budget for fiscal year 24-25. The citywide budget is slightly more than $69 million, with $29.5 million for general fund and $21.5 million for water, sewer, and rubbish combined. Uh, the city's general property tax revenue is 6.9% higher than last year, while the Samorsa property tax revenue projection is 4.4% higher than last year. This provides a net increase of 5.9%. Um, on a side note, it's interesting going through this, um, I'd like to point out that the city's assessed and taxable values peaked during fiscal year 2007, actually before the market crash. At that time, the taxable value was $788,492,108. With the market collapse in 2008 and then the restrictions on taxable value growth from the Headley Amendment, this year's taxable value has only grown back to $661,642,634. That's still $127 million below 18 years ago and does not account for the impact of inflation. So just a little side note on that. Um, within the budget is the latest state projections for revenue sharing, and that is only currently showing a 1.4% increase over last year. Um, the budget does include all of the labor contracts that have been agreed to. Um, there's not a whole lot of new stuff, a few you know, infrastructure projects here and there. Uh, but the general fund is proposed to use fund balance in the amount of $308,447. This is a manageable number considering our fund balance. In water sewer this year, there is $19.6 million in state grants for two different lead service line projects. Additionally, there's another $5 million in other water sewer projects above that. Uh, the water and sewer uh, rate proposed rate uh, shows a 9.4% increase. Uh, this was calculated with, with a $0 increase in the working capital reserve. Um, however, since the budget was initially prepared, the sanitary district finalized their numbers and they came in lower than projected. This will result in a change during our budget workshop meetings in May and the increase will be lower to around 8%. Um, and one other final highlight is that the county drain debt millage will once again drop. It is a slight reduction, but it's going from 5.1 mills to 5.0 mills, but it is a reduction. You will now have over a month to review the budget information and prepare yourself for the main workshops. And if you have any questions before then, feel free to contact myself or City Manager Walton. Do not contact Assistant City Manager. Oh man, she doesn't do numbers. <laughs> um, and that's, that's all I have for the introduction of the budget itself. Right. Does anyone have any questions on that? Um, and today I think we just have to schedule the workshops. A quick question about that. Those dates are the 7th is a council meeting. Um, did we mean to say the 14th and 15th of May? It was scheduled at 6 o'clock. Oh, we usually don't do the budget workshop, though, the same day as a uh, council meeting. I'm happy to switch it if everybody's available. So whatever council prefers. Whatever council prefers. I don't think one hour. Well, no. I'm doing, no, no. doing those in the same night, I, I'd be against it. <laughs> uh, why don't we do the alternate uh, weeks? Do you want to make a motion, then? Sure. Just schedule? Sure, uh, Mr. Mayor, motion that we uh, receive the city manager's proposed fiscal year 2024-2025 budget and schedule budget workshops for the following dates and times, May 14th, uh, 2024, and May 15th, uh, 2024, both at 6 p.m. Sure. All right. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? 
Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Uh, item B, introduction and first reading of ordinance 24 uh, 1236, um, appropriations and tax levies for fiscal year 24 25. Would anyone like to make a motion? Do we have to do this first first reading tonight for this? It seems pretty early. It's not normally done when it's introduced, and then the second reading is after the workshops and after the public hearing in June. Um, but there's no reason it has to be done tonight. You could do it after the budget workshop. How does council feel? Does it? Well, go ahead. Oh, well. I was well. I was gonna yeah ask a few questions I guess before even voting on that. Anyway, um, uh, so I don't know. Do, should we just ask a few questions now? I okay. guess then. Um, I guess can we can we review the water and sewer just for a second again then? Um, what are so? I guess there's a 13 percent water increase, seven percent sewer, which comes to the 9.4 that you mentioned, which I guess will be reduced. A little bit to eight, or yeah, I think is what you said. Um, and no changes to ready to serve. How are we? Um, well, many you know years ago when we increased in like the 2017 time frame when uh, water bill went up like 30 percent in one year, we talked about getting cash reserve in the account, you know, in case of emergency, other projects that we need to do. Um, what is that looking like? And then why it seems like these increases are larger than the GLWA increases or SMSD. Like, what's the explanation for all that? Uh, well, that, that's where the budget workshop's going to kick in. The, the rates are driven by the cost that are budgeted. Um, and and uh, Director Pellucci would be the one that would have to answer the specifics on the expenditures. The GLWA volume for the water usage did go up around 4%, 3.8 3 I want to say. The fixed charge went up over 5%. And the fixed charge is a larger component of GLWA water rates. Um, but the biggest cost is actually not the purchase of water, it's the maintenance of the system. So it's the people fixing water main breaks, it's the, I mean, you'd have to go through all the line item. But the, um, there's only 1.8 million um, of the water that is actual buying water from GLWA. There's another almost 4 million of expenses for the water system that is the people and material and everything to maintain it. Um, now, so, sewer is the exact opposite, where that's about 7 million from the sanitary district and barely a million in the other expenses. Um, but you know, water is probably the smallest cost in the water rate. So the way we're saying the uh, water main breaks are factored into the water rate, not the ready to serve. Uh, Correct. The ready to serve is for projects to replace water mains, not the maintenance. And the water main breaks considered maintenance. So we. Yes, I thought we, we've been doing a lot of water main replacements trying to do them where we have them more often. It seems like we should be trending in a better direction, not the, uh, you know, not a larger increase. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would have to defer to Director Pellucci on that one. Um, it, it's his budgeted expenditures. Okay. And I guess part of the, then the ready to serve too, it seems like, so we have 10 million to work on of lead service lines, of course, but we've budgeted a million per year for at least these two years. Seems like, well, 10 million will be enough for the two contractors to work on for these two years. So we're not spending that extra million, but then we're not seeing that kind of reflected in the rate. We kept the ready to serve the same, but we've been expecting a million per year uh, for lead service line work too. We have a, um, uh, it's a nine, 18, 19 million dollar project with the state. That, that's where I said there was 19.6 million of state money, 10 million with lead service lines. Another 9.6 is a different grant that will also help with the lead service lines. But the city will be on the hook 
for about nine million of that large project, um, and that's coming out of we, we do have money that hasn't been spent on ready to serve from previous years, plus the new uh, revenues that'll be created. But the intent is that any money that comes in on ready to serve goes into a project. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, I'm fine with I, I, the water rates are something that I wanted to look at more. I might want to actually get some more information from Darren on uh, short expenditures. Um, so I'm, I, whatever council feels like doing, we could do a first reading tonight. Obviously, we can make changes before a second reading, or we can just hold off on doing a first reading if, if we want to get those answers first. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to table? Um, I mean, I might suggest till to the May 14th or 15th meeting. I would move that we table the introduction and first reading of ordinance number 24-1236 FY 2024-25 appropriations and tax levies until our May 7th or 8th. Whichever, whatever meeting, 14th or 15th, are budget workshops. Let's do the uh, 15th, May 15th budget workshop. Sir Sport? Actually, can I make one friendly? It's, sometimes we've done the budget in one day, so uh, maybe we do 14th and we can push it to the 15th if we. Uh, okay. Is that fine? That, that would be good. That's good. Okay. <coughs> so I will support that. Moved and supported. Uh, please follow. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. <clears throat> Item C, schedule a public hearing for proposed fiscal year 2024-25. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll motion we uh, schedule a public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2024-2025 budget and tax rate to support the budget for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. 7 p.m. during the regular council meeting pursuant to Chapter 12, Section 7 of the East Point City Charter and direct the city manager to publish all required notices of the public hearing. Mr. Sport? Support. Please come well. Councilmember Monaco? Yes. Councilmember Bishadley? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Uh, moving on to item G, um, I don't have uh, the printout from the email you sent. Oh. But the CDBG, the CDBG issue, anyone, um, would you like to speak to it? Yes, I would. Uh, so we received a, um, a request for a, a meeting, a phone call on Thursday with the Cone County's CDBG, which is the Community Development Block Grant, which is 150000 per grant that Council decided um, on uh, January 16th to do two road projects with additional funding coming from the city. Um, at that time, the vote was for priority application number one to be the complete reconstruction of Lexington from Stevens to Forest, and priority number two was the complete reconstruction of Tepper from Stevens to Forest. Um, and literally, the project cost is, is less than 4000 total between the two. Um, we were informed by the county um, that they have this uh, qualifying uh, number. It's called the low to moderate, moderate income percentage calculations. Um, there were some issues with the Lexington calculations. Um, the county requested um, or asked if uh, this council would consider prioritizing Teppert as priority number one. They're, at this point, they're only funding the priority number one, but the, the anticipation is, as in every year, um, there will be CDBG 2020 funds left over and they will be doing a substantial amendment um, at which time they, they anticipate that they will be funding priority number two. Um, so that the question is, uh, the, the request is to change the priorities. Um, I did get an email, um, uh, Mr. Monaco had asked for something in writing, and uh, this evening uh, I got an email um, from the, the county, the project uh, manager. Um, one, please confirm that the city accepts the decision to prioritize Tepper Avenue project over Lexington Avenue project. Uh, number two was a clarification, um, a statement under section B of the project description, which is actually for the city engineer, 
uh, about leveraging some of the few years of CDBG funds to reconstruct Tepper. Um, and number three, please confirm that the other public resources shown in the budget for the project, 202,867.36 cents, local street fund, has been committed to the project. So this is um, now before, before you for the motion. Um, if, if possible, to prioritize uh, the Tepper project at this time, uh, which also gives us time to work with the county on um, revising the uh, Lexington project to meet the, to redo the calculations to meet the LMI uh, requirements. No, I think, I just have one question. I, I don't think I understand if our calculations are wrong in Lexington, how are we able to revise and resubmit? This sounds like either it is a CDBG eligible census block or it's not. So why would we, if it is, we should be able to just keep our priorities the same. If it's not, we can't make it number two even. So if you look at the map, um, and in the upper quadrant, um, you see track 2584, um, and it's black group. Two is a gray area. Yeah. So that does not meet the LMI criteria, so it becomes an issue of traffic movement, which is why it's something that would go to the engineers. Um, the question for, if you'll see, so Lexington is in the track 2581, block group two, while Tepper is in block group one to the east. So the, the only question was Tepper, and particularly as it was near Forest Park Elementary, was a question for the school as to what geographic boundaries are for Forest Park. Um, the school's response was that all students between Gratiot and Kelly between 8 and 10 in the K through 2 grades are eligible to go to Forest Park. Again, ignoring the school of choice, but, it, but that, so that, um, that firmly cemented Tepper. Um, so what we have to work on for Lexington is the, the traffic flow and are there people, are there families within these eligible block, the yellow blocks that will be using Lexington for their travels. Not sure. I, well, so our, we're talking Lexington north of Stevens, though, right? So, and that's all fully yellow. Correct, but it's the it's the one it's the block directly north of Stevens. So the question is, we had relied on um, the block group um, to the west, closer to Gratiot, um, but it did not um, give us a sufficient number. So we are going. The county's going to assist us in. Um, revising the that based on the traffic flow. Oh, so the we it's not just if the project is in that specific census block, the other closer census blocks also count. They assist in promoting the project. Okay, others, yes. Interesting. We've never talked about that before. I guess it's just worked out then. But then, how can we revise it? I guess I don't understand that part. How do we revise it to, it either works or it doesn't, right? Well, that's, that's what they're willing to work with us in the engineer. We, um, one of the issues was that there's no traffic flow from Lexington because of the um, Kennedy park, park being there, that there's no traffic flow going west because the roads stop at the park. So it was issues like that that, that brought it up. Repeat that again about no flow on Lexington. Um, because Forrest and Haas stop at the park. Yeah. So they, there is no driving driving west um, Forrest or Haas yeah, because, from Lexington. Yeah, well Lexington goes north and south. Correct. And they're suggesting that we reevaluate that and take account or explain that to me again. It's the traffic flow of, of where the families live that are going to be using Lexington. So we had talked about, um, we had relied on the census track here, which is just east of Gratiot, west of where Lexington is. But because of the park, um, people do not, you cannot cross through. So the county wants to work with us with the black group one and some of the other black groups. So I think I understand Mr. Councilman Tomatico's issue is <clears throat> switching it to priority two because we're not sure if it works, but then we're working with the county to Absolutely. try to get it to work. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And of course, if something would come up, it, I mean, it's going to come back to uh, council regardless. Any other questions regarding that? Uh, I guess not. Uh, 
Does anyone uh, wish to make a motion? No. Sure. So I guess everyone seemed like everyone's. Well, so number two, uh, Ms. Hummel, you said we need to bring it in front of us again anyway, even if we do set it as number two right now. Um, we don't have to bring it. If you would set it as number two, that, that would be up to you. Of course, we want to be completely transparent. Should there be any problem at all with Lexington, we would absolutely bring it to council. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, move the amending priority of applications submitted to the Macomb County Competitive Brick and Mortar Grant Program for Community Development Block Grant Funds to identify the complete reconstruction of Teppert from Stevenson Forest as priority application number one uh, to revise and resubmit the complete reconstruction of Lexington as priority number two uh, when additional CDBG funding becomes available and further authorize the city manager to execute all documents necessary for the program. There's support. Support. Any other questions? Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Shadley? Yes. Councilmember Curley? No. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Uh, moving on to uh, payroll of bills, would anyone like to make a motion? Mr. Mayor, a motion that we pay the bills in the amount of It bills in the amount of three million eight thousand six hundred thirty-eight dollars and forty-nine cents. Is there support? Support. Any questions? Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Shadler? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. All right, moving on to uh, the second hearing of the public. The second hearing of the public is now open. Would anyone wish to be heard? Good evening, uh, Council Mayor and Council people. Thank you for having me. Uh, I just wanted to remind you again about uh, the parking in front of my building as well as the five businesses on Nine Mile that uh, I'm, I'm totally asking you guys to try to look at this parking and make a variance so that um, we can continue having our parking. It's the only area uh, on Nine Mile that has uh, my area and another area on Nine Mile that has parking and the businesses totally, totally depend on this this parking and we have no other area to park and I'm just asking you again uh, to make see if you could uh, come up with a variance that would allow us to continue having that parking in front so thank you thank you anyone else yes Anthony for again I guess I can get my answer about the big boys What's the status of that? It's been, it's been there for years now, yes. After this, there's uh, council comments and we can respond to at that point. Oh, I thought this was the time, okay. So, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to hear? Hello, my name is John Sula and I live over on Rain. Uh, you do some um, work for the, um, uh, the pipes, the water pipes. Um, it, it says I can turn my uh, water on cold water on for five minutes to eliminate any discoloration but um, I can't turn my cold water on in my kitchen um, it was working just fine yesterday and now that it did the water main I can't turn the cold water on in my kitchen is there anything that can be done about this in my house yeah can you um, leave your contact can I ask him to leave with you just leave your uh, contact information so the city can respond to you Thank you kindly. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, good evening. My name is James Tenney. Um, 22448 Gaskin. I've been here since 1985, 39 years. I raised three kids here. A family town. That's why we came here. Um, somebody made a comment about um, this marijuana thing that it's no big deal because we 
we have liquor all the way down the street. Alcohol has never done anything wrong. I'm sure there's nobody in here at all that had their life changed by alcohol. Very simply, my vote is no. Thank you. Anyone else wishing here? Anyone else? Seeing none, the second hearing of the public is closed, and we'll move on to um, Mayor and Council reports. Uh, we'll start with Councilman DeMonica. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, like uh, Mr. Wadecki said earlier, if uh, you can come out on April 20th and help us clean up litter on Kelly, that would be good. Uh, just you'll see us all near the median by eight and Grand Shit there. Uh, you'll see us. <laughs> just come on out, please. Please help us. Um, you know, we try to do uh, one big push at the beginning of the season, try and clean things up from you know all the litter over the winter. That doesn't end up getting cleaned up, and you know we end up seeing after the snow melts, which who knows? Maybe we get April snow. I guess is what I thought. <laughs> I saw in the news the other day. Um, so hopefully you can come out April twentieth again on ten a.m. Um, meet us uh, meet us in the media. And the beautification commission is putting that together. Um, and then I guess uh, well one quick uh, thank you. Thanks for introducing the budget. Look forward to. Talking about that some more. Um, thanks, Ms. Holman and Mr. Bloom. Um, and then I guess just the other thing. So I've been on city council for nine years, and I'd say the first eight years um, never had, at least I personally, been accused of bribery or things like that. But these last couple items, we just, people disagree and are just accusing blatantly the whole city council or just anybody involved of being accused of bribery, can we please, we can disagree without accusing each other of things like that or things some people used. And again, and this is just a couple people, I think three I've seen now, at least accusing myself um, of bribery or intimidation or what was the other term used? I don't know. Let's just disagree on our opinions and talk about it and talk about the different issues with without going there. Um, that's all. Let's try to just um, have uh, friendlier conversations about things. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, Councilwoman Pashetlik. I'd like to piggyback on what um, Car uh, Councilman um, DeMonico had also mentioned. Um, with respect to uh, any kind of bribery or any of that nonsense that's been brought up, it's, it's simply not true. Um, the issue of marijuana, the recreational marijuana, uh, was requested um, at the council table at a meeting by myself. So if anyone has a problem with it, feel free to contact me. I'm, I mean, Lord knows my uh, contact information is uh, all over the city, so you can't, you can't miss it. Um, with respect to the emails that were received, I do apologize. I did not respond to any of the emails that we received this past week um, as I just got home from a vacation, so I was unable to um, respond to all the emails, but I did receive them and want to thank everyone for their input. I'd also like to thank everyone today for their input at the hearing of the public. It's always good to voice your opinion. Whether or not you agree with us, that's you know completely understandable. Um, I have received several phone calls today. Uh, one of them in particular was mentioning that the issue of marijuana should be, um, of recreational marijuana should be put on the ballot. I would just like to remind everyone that the issue of recreational marijuana was put on the ballot. It was voted on. And the way the city council government works, just so that there's like a brief explanation, you vote for us to be in these positions to make decisions on your behalf. We can't bring it forward every single issue that comes to us. So I hope everyone understands that it's not underhanded, undermined, or bribery that's going on here. It's simply doing our job that we were elected to do. Um, whether or not you agree with us is another story. Um, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but we are just doing our job, not doing anything illegal. And um, oh, with respect to the big boy property, um, we had a gentleman ask about that. There's many vacant properties in our um, city. And uh, to be honest, that's a very big concern of mine. I would love to see places uh, come in here. I mean, I have great ideas. I'd love to see the uh, 
Push down ship by grass shit that, that just vacated. I, I think it'd be a great dance studio. It's got the parking next door. I mean, I would love to see businesses come here. I've been a lifelong resident, as many of you have as well, and I, my heart is with this city, and I truly do want to see development here. So um, I welcome any opinions and any opportunity for businesses to come here. I welcome any businesses to come here and start. I, I, I truly appreciate the ones who are currently here. I want to thank those businesses that have stayed here and been with us. Um, you know, that's that's the reason we have the tax revenue and stuff. We, we definitely need to keep those businesses, and I would like to encourage businesses to come here as well. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a lot of folks here today and a lot of opinions about recreational marijuana uh, no, we have not made a decision on that. Um, we, need to, we need to take our time, have workshops, and whatever we have to do to make an intelligent decision. And you've heard the old saying that when somebody accuses a politician and says nasty things about it, a politician shouldn't say anything. Well, that's, I agree with that. We're human beings. And the gentleman who got up, got up there and said that we're probably going to be on the take if we approve it, uh, we're not on the take. The, the men and women who sit up here love this city. And they are people who are honest and they want to do the best job that they, they can. Um, I took count of the people who are against the people who are for it. So if we approve it, there's going to be some people mad at us. If we don't, there's going to be people mad at us. So we have to, you know, we have to take our time and make make a decision. A lot of the people made a, you know, they, they made a lot of sense. You know, I, I've lived in this city 64 years. Can you believe that? 64 years. Some of the people in this council weren't even born yet. Right. <laughs> So I guess you I guess you can call me the old timer, but by golly I love this city. When I retire from being the mayor, they said, "Well, I guess I suppose you're going to move to Royal Oak because that's where your church is." I said, "No, it only takes 20 minutes to get there." So I'm still here. I'm still here. So be patient with us, and uh, if we go the way that you disagree, understand that we didn't do it just. Nonchalantly, we did it after investigating and uh, and trying to figure something out. And the only thing else I would say, uh, Mr. Mayor, first of all, tomorrow is our anniversary of our daughter's death. Uh, she died of leukemia at the age of 45. So, if somebody wants to call me tomorrow, I probably won't answer the phone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll start off with uh, thank you for, uh, to everyone for coming out, voicing your opinions. Um, uh, I would like to say when looking at the marijuana issue, uh, I, you know, I know that there's some tax revenue tied to it. That's not something that really goes into the equation for me. Um, I'm more concerned about looking at uh, our vacant buildings and the blight in the community. I know that there's concern about what uh, type of activity these kind of stores bring. Um, four years ago, uh, or maybe five years ago now, when I was first on council, we did a lot of research on this issue. I'm kind of diving back into it since we're looking at it again. Um, and I, I know that people have concerns, but I also know that blight and vacant buildings bring uh, unwanted elements to the community. So there's a lot of things that, to consider. Um, but I do appreciate everyone's comments and concerns, and I think, um, I know I'll continue doing my research, and the others up here will as well. On, um, April 20th, I'm excited to go to the cleanup. I bought a new vest that I wanted to use. So, um, and uh, uh, that is, oh, I, I guess I'll clarify a couple of things. Um, you know, I, I've heard comments, 
we don't need more pot shops and, and things. Believe we already have three. So the city issued three licenses. None of them have opened. So we don't have any facilities, uh, recreational or medical, that are operating in the city limits. So I just wanted to clarify that based on some of the comments. Um, uh, in terms of the big boy property, uh, as, as Council of Chadwick stated, there's a lot of vacant buildings. I know administration has been working on trying to get something done with that property, either aiding and facilitating development. I don't know where it stands now, but maybe that's something at the next meeting um, we can kind of get an update on. I know from speaking to Ian McCain, the city's been trying to get something done with it because it's that vacant for far too long. Um, that's all that I have, and I guess I will consider a motion or entertain a motion to come to closed session. If anyone would like to. <laughs> sure. I, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'll motion to go into closed session uh, for attorney client privilege uh, regarding recreational marijuana and um, uh, for settlement strategy. Pursuant to the uh, well, for the first MCL 15.2681H, and for the second 15.2681E. Alright, motion support, please call the roll. Councilmember Monaco? Yes. Councilmember Shadrick? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Going to closed session at 8.35 p.m.
it's a question of how I feel like she's she's got the nice song now. You know that stuff that they put in the All right, it's our ten minutes. Mr. Mayor, I'll mention that we follow the advice of our legal counsel on item B, the settlement strategy. Support. Who did support? Please come up. Councilmember Blanico? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Councilmember Curley? Yeah. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll second that. All right, motion to adjourn. Please sign the roll. Councilmember Curley? Yes. Councilmember Blanico? Yes. Mayor Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Shadlick? Yes. Meeting adjourned at 942.